Good afternoon EDH enthusiasts, I'm the Planeswalker Project and welcome to a main set discussion. So with the release of Outlaws of Thunder Junction, we're hitting the old dusty trail again to search for more magic cards that we could slap a crossover IP onto, and yet somehow we missed a golden opportunity to do a Red Dead Redemption set. That being said, we have over 200 new cards from the set, and if you're like me, you want to use your money in the most effective way and purchase only the cards that you need from a set before moving on. I don't have the financial responsibility to buy Magic Sealed product, and so in this video we're going to discuss some of the cards that you should consider getting if you're a commander player. Which if you're watching this channel you likely are. This is an awkward segue, but let's start the video. Starting off our list is actually a reprint, the Archangel of Tithes, a 4 mana 3-5 angel with flying. As long as it's untapped, creatures can't tag you or planeswalkers you control unless their controllers pay 1 mana for each of their creatures. As long as the Archangel is attacking, creatures can't block unless their controller pays 1 mana for each of those creatures. This always struck me as a pillow fort card that could pivot when the time is right. This functions in some ways as a bit of a redundancy on the ghostly prison effect, protecting you from attacks. But when you choose to shift gears and go onto the offensive, this also ensures that you have some capacity to get damage through. In token decks, this can be a support card to help you close out games should you have gone wide enough to win. Aven Interrupter is a 3 mana bird rogue with flash and flying. When it enters, you exile a target spell and then that spell becomes plotted. Spells your opponents cast from graveyard or exile cost 2 more mana to cast. So this utilizes the new plotted mechanic, which lets a plotted card be cast as a sorcery on a later turn without paying its mana cost. Plotting a spell is in some ways similar to the suspend mechanic, although you don't have to worry as much about the timing of your spells. The Interrupter is a bit of a wonky delay style counterspell to use on an opponent's spell, and it can give some counter magic interactions to white. What this basically does is remove the spell being cast from the stack, and so that spell never resolves. Your opponent can then cast it again at a later time, but because of the second ability, this makes the spell cost 2 mana more. This can also mess with your opponent's counter magic, as if you remove their counter spell from the stack, you therefore protect your spell. Because of the imposed timing restriction on that plotted spell, this also entirely neutralizes any counter spell that you use this on. This also can impact mechanics such as Cascade, Discover, Foretell, your impulsive card draw mechanics, Suspend, and then some. It's definitely a card to pick up if you're in white and you're looking for more interaction. Bovine Intervention is a 2-drop instant. It destroys a target artifact or creature, and then its controller creates a 2-2 white ox creature token. Now, I don't want to start any beef with anyone by using this card, but this can be used as an excellent piece of interaction, killing off a problematic creature or artifact, and then the opponent is left with just a generic 2-2 cow. At 2 mana, this not being too mana intensive on white pips, this can easily be splashed in any decks wanting a little more removal. Claim Jumper is a 3-3 Rabbit Mercenary for 3. It has Vigilance, and then when it enters, if an opponent controls more lands than you, you can tutor a Plains land onto the battlefield tapped. Then, if an opponent controls more lands than you, you can repeat this process once. So, this might sound a little confusing, but it checks the land count on all opponent battlefields, and if you control less lands than any one opponent, then you get a land. Then, you check once more, and if an opponent still controls more lands than you, then you get one more Plains. At the most, you'll net two Plains lands, and they do not need to be basic lands. They do come in tapped, but considering this is a really good ramp for white, I will take it. High Noon is a 2 mana enchantment. Each player cannot cast more than one spell each turn. For 4 and a red, you can sacrifice High Noon to deal 5 damage to any target. This is another rule of law style effect, and while it does add in the conditional red color identity, this can still slot into decks that can run it as a solid stacks piece to slow games down. Now, it's not anything to write home about, but I personally love Holy Cow. I didn't know I needed an Ox Angel in my life, but here we are. I know that some Magic the Gathering players do find their personalities are grounded in being stoic and serious, and so something like this might seem out of character for the game, but I personally love silly puns like this. I only wish that this was an uncommon so that I can build a PDH deck around it. Archmage's Newt is a 2 mana 2-2. Two -two. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, target instant or sorcery in your graveyard gains flashback until the end of turn, and then the cost of said flashback is the mana cost of the card. If the Newt is saddled, the flashback cost is zero. You can saddle the Newt for three, which is similar to the crew mechanic on artifact vehicles. You tap creatures whose total power is three or greater, and it basically unlocks an additional effect as the creature is considered saddled. Basically what we have here is a revamped Snapcaster Mage that relies more on combat and less on instant speed interactions. 
There are some cards that this can't hit as effectively as the Snapcaster Mage, but I do see a decent enough amount of overlap that I think this might make it a worthwhile card. Double Down is a 4 mana enchantment. Whenever you cast an Outlaw spell, copy that spell. Outlaw spells are any spells with the subtype of Assassin, Mercenary, Pirate, Rogue, or Warlock. If the spell is a permanent, like a creature spell, then the copy then becomes a token. This is tremendous. See, a lot of cards that fall under this category are pretty powerful cards, and so getting double the value out of a single spell is going to make for a much more explosive move. We had a few years ago, we got the Rogue Kindred deck that had a mill sub-theme. We've also had quite a few pirate decks over the years, and it is a very popular creature type. So this is definitely going to slot into a lot of those decks. The Key to the Vault is a legendary 2 mana equipment artifact with an equip cost of 2 and a blue. Whenever the equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, you may look at that many cards from the top of your library, you may exile a non-land card from among them, and then the rest go to the bottom of your library. You may cast the exiled card without paying its mana cost. First of all, this lets you convert your combat damage into a very powerful scry-like ability, but it lets you exile a card you can cast for free. Many of the best cards in Commander use that phrase, that many, and because of how large some of the creatures can become in Commander, this can scale rather intensively. You can also cast the spell for free, which in many cases let you drop the biggest card in the peaked at pile. Step Between Worlds is 5 mana for a sorcery. Each player may shuffle their hand and graveyard into their library, and then draw 7. You then exile the Step Between Worlds. It also has Plot for 6 mana, which lets you exile it, and then you may cast it later on without paying its mana cost, at a sorcery speed. This is a great reset button for decks like Moldrotha or the Mimeoplasm that can dump a lot of cards into the graveyard and may need a means to recover from an overextension. Because it is a May ability, not every player is required to do so, and so there is some flexibility in how this will play out. Caustic Bronco is a 2 mana 2-2 two -two snake horse mount. Good lord. It also has Saddle 3. Whenever it attacks, you reveal the top card of your library and you put it into your hand. You lose life equal to that card's mana value if the Bronco isn't saddled. If it is, each opponent loses that much life instead. I'm beginning to notice a trend in some of these saddled cards in this set, in that they emulate more powerful cards from Magic's history in a slightly tweaked method. The newt we discussed earlier reminds me of Snapcaster Mage. This snake horse thing reminds me of the Dark Confidant. I feel like there will be contexts where the, this will be the better card than the Confidant as you can sequence your moves so that the creature is saddled and then your opponent loses the life instead of you. Insatiable Avarice is a conditionally costed sorcery that has a base cost of 1 black mana. It has Spree which lets you pick which additional modes you want for additional mana. For 2 generic mana more you can search for a card, shuffle and put that card on top. For 2 black more, you can have target player draw 3 cards and lose 3 life. This is powerful. You basically get a weaker vampiric tutor for the first mode, but then you get to choose to have a target player draw 3, which could also be you. It could end up costing 5 mana to do this, but in some situations you would want that level of card selection and card draw. If you have other means to draw that card that you tutored for, like a Bolus's Citadel, this can be even more effective. Rush of Dread is another conditionally costed sorcery that is a base cost of 3 mana. For 1 additional, target opponent sacrifices half of the creatures they control rounded up. For 2 additional, target opponent discards half of the cards in their hand rounded up. For 3 additional, target opponent loses half of their life rounded up. And I do believe that for each of these additional abilities, you can have them target a different player. And so if you have 8 mana that you don't have other things to do with, this could land a devastating blow to your table's resources. I personally like this card quite a bit, and I'll definitely be tinkering with it. Terror of the Peaks is another solid reprint, and is a 5-4 dragon with flying for 5 mana. Spells your opponent's cast that would target the Terror cost an additional 3 life to cast. It's not quite Ward, but it's close. Whenever another creature enters under your control, the Terror deals damage equal to that creature's power to any target. This can be an effective redundancy on something like Impact Tremors or Perforos as you get to stack up damage triggers and burn opponents quicker. This can also be given Infect to make it even more mean, but you didn't hear that from me. Goldvein Hydra is an X and 1 green for a Hydra with Vigilance, Trample, and Haste. 
Yikes. It enters with X plus one plus one counters on it. When it dies, you create treasure tokens equal to its power. This is a fun one. Treasure tokens are a phenomenal resource in Commander, and so you can invest your mana into the X cost so that later on, should the Hydra die, you get back to that investment in the form of treasures. But because the death trigger will create treasure tokens based on its current power, any additional power buffs between when you cast it and it dies will also be contributing. And so with that, we're going to come to the end of this video. What cards do you like from this set? Are there ones that we didn't talk about? There are a lot of cards I feel that I want to test that we didn't mention. We did get a lot of desert cards I'm curious to try out. If you enjoyed this video, likes and shares are very much appreciated, and they're the best way to help support the channel. If you're new, subscribe and ring the little bell icon so that you never miss an upload. And as always, I appreciate you spending time here with me today, and I'll catch you all next time.